Hey guys, welcome to another edition of the Monday Morning Tennis Rant. If you haven't seen my video where I made picks of every match of the Australian Open, I highly recommend that you do so. I'm going to give you a quick update on how I'm doing, how many I got right, how many I got wrong. But let's start today's rant by talking about the commentators on TV. See, if you go on Twitter today, you're going to see a lot of people complaining about John McEnroe. Even former players are writing negative things about Johnny Mac. And the reason is that Johnny Mac had no idea who Zizou Bergs is, a player ranked 120 in the world, who played Tsitsipas in the first round. And normally I would say it would be ridiculous for a commentator to not be informed about the players and to not study the game. But we gotta cut Johnny Mac some slack you know that John McEnroe doesn't watch tennis you know that he doesn't care about the guys that are playing on the challenger tour is it disrespectful to the players yes but I find an exception to John McEnroe because he's a legend of the game and he's not involved with tennis in such a way he has other interests such as art and so on he brings a tremendous amount of value to commentary in my opinion he's the commentary goat there's not one other commentator that comes close in my opinion, I think John McEnroe is the best, despite the fact that he doesn't know some of these players in the first and second round. And yes, it can be disrespectful and annoying when there's a player that we all know, but he's never heard of him. Now, I was ready to hate Nick Kyrgios as a commentator. I'm not going to lie to you, but I was so positively surprised with Nick. He did a phenomenal job. I can't even believe it. He is a great commentator. What he brings to the commentary booth is something that the other commentators don't, which is experience against the players that are currently playing on tour. Nick has played against most of them, and he brought a lot of valuable info to the Tsitsipas match that I watched. Now, speaking of the Tsitsipas match, there were a lot of interesting things there, and it was finally one situation which I get so many questions from the recreational players that I coach and that is whether you are allowed to reach over the net and hit the ball and yes you absolutely are but it has to be the right scenario so Bergs hit a volley with backspin that was very high and it was obvious that the ball was going to bounce on Tsitsipas side but it was going to go back on Bergs side so when that's the case Tsitsipas was allowed to reach over and hit the ball, which he did, and he had a winner off that shot. Now, if the ball does not have backspin, in other words, it's not going back on the same side it came from, you are, of course, not allowed to reach over the net. Does this scenario happen frequently? It actually does. Backspin is something that does happen frequently, either on purpose or by accident, but what's not frequent is that the player on the other side is close enough to the net to be able to reach over and play the ball. Most of the time, players are too far away and the ball actually does go back over the net before the player can reach the ball. Now, a super interesting thing that Nick Kyrgios pointed out right away was that Tsitsipas was serving with a pinpoint stance. And we all know that he has a platform stance serve. And I cannot tell you how many experts in the tennis field have falsely explained this as some kind of attempt to save Tsitsipas's back. I'm going to tell you that if you have back problem, switching from a platform stance to a pinpoint stance will do absolutely nothing for your back. And why is that the case? Because back pain might occur when you load your serve, when you bend forwards or backwards, when you extend your back. That's what's going to cause back problems. Now, whether you're serving platform or pinpoint, you're going to load the serve the same way. So the only way to avoid back pain on the serve, which is something that's very difficult to avoid, by the way, would be to load the serve less and put less stress on your back as you're loading. Simply switching from a platform to a pinpoint stance will do nothing for your back because you're going to be loading the exact same way. So it is mind boggling to me how many people today are talking about the fact that Tsitsipas was serving pinpoint because he was trying to save his back. Now, interestingly, he abandoned the pinpoint stance and later started serving again with a platform stance. Now, if you want to know in great detail whether you should be doing what Tsitsipas is doing and switch your serve either from a pinpoint to a platform or vice versa, I made a great video that you should check out. I'm going to link it in the description. Now, interestingly, Coco Goff also made a change to her serve. You will often see that players will make tweaks in their game in the off season. So Coco worked with Andy Roddick and interestingly Coco abbreviated her starting position on her toss and also abbreviated her backswing a little bit. So it appears that Andy Roddick is teaching her how to serve like he does. But I will say that there's nothing wrong 
with this change because her higher starting position of the toss perfectly aligns with her take back. So you have to understand that your toss arm and your hitting arm have to be in sync with each other. When you are making changes to either one, you have to be aware of that. And Coco said in the press conference that her toss has gotten a lot more consistent and she's therefore able to serve with more confidence and is able to serve faster. Andy Murray lost to Echeverry in straight sets and he said that this might be his last Australian Open and it's been tough to watch Andy Murray trying to find his form back and he simply can't because his body is not allowing him to do so. I'm sure that in his mind he still believed that he can be in the top 10 or the top 5 but the body simply isn't playing along and if you watch my last Monday morning rant I talked about how I think Rafa should retire and you never want to blame a player who is competitive and wants to keep going I respect the competitive spirit of Andy Murray but there's gonna come a point in time where he sees that there's actually no chance to get back to the level where he used to be and it makes a lot of sense to call it quits but I want to remind you guys that Andy Murray is one of the greatest players of all time he's a Hall of Famer just at the Australian Open, he reached the final five times. He was part of that group. It was the big four, not the big three. He was as good as Rafa, as good as Novak, and as good as Federer when he was in his prime. Now, last year during the US Open, I uh, made a rant about Djokovic hanging up the phone on Shelton, and I got a lot of comments in this video. People are so fascinated with this matchup, Djokovic against Shelton, and it's being hyped because possibly in the fourth round, they could be playing each other. You see here, Djokovic against Shelton in the fourth round. So of course, the tennis media is asking both Shelton and Djokovic a lot of questions about the last time they played. And here's what Djokovic said today. It was a reaction against him because he did not behave properly with respect on court and before the match. If anyone places himself in the unsportsmanlike zone, I react. Okay, so this is very different from the I tried to copy him. That's what he said after the US Open. And look, this is good drama for the game. It's creating headlines. I like this matchup very much. Shelton is a phenomenal player. He's got unbelievable potential, possibly one of the biggest serves in the game right now. And of course, Djokovic is the GOAT. So hopefully these guys make it into the fourth round and let's see what happens. And I can tell you that people get so engaged with this topic. It's about 50-50, I believe. There's a lot of people that think Djokovic is in the wrong. He shouldn't have did what he did with hanging up the phone on Shelton. And there's 50% of people that are with Djokovic against Shelton who think that Shelton behaved like a brat. I am more with Djokovic. And I'm going to tell you why. Because in this generation, there is a thing going on on the internet where elders are not being respected. Now, you might not be aware of this, but this is definitely a thing. And when I grew up, you were supposed to respect your elders. Now, when it comes to tennis, this is something of an unwritten law that you respect the older players. And let me just read to you what Djokovic said about Agassi. Andre, great to have you. Thank you so much for gracing us and Australian Open with your presence. It's amazing to see you. I haven't seen you in years. It was 4-0 and deuce, and I made a forehand winner. I smiled at you and said, it's almost like your return. After that, I lost three games in a row. Not your fault. I was inspired by your presence and overwhelmed to see you. So during Djokovic's first round match against Dino Prismic from Split Croatia, who played an unbelievable match, Djokovic praised him immensely after the match. But in any case, during this match, Andrew Agassi was in the crowd. So this is the type of respect that I'm talking about. You can see how much Djokovic respects Agassi as an older player who also happens to be a legend of the game and you would expect someone like Shelton to give Djokovic that same respect and he absolutely did not do that at last year's US Open. Okay guys now it's time to see how many picks I got right and wrong on both the men's and women's draw. So if you take a look here there's a lot of check marks. Take a look this is the men's draw. You see how many I got right? Uh, this is pretty impressive, right? Look at this side. Some of these matches haven't been played yet. And I'll take a look at the women. This is usually where I really shine. Look how many check marks. This is super impressive skills when it comes to picking. I'm just kidding, guys. This is not skill. Uh, this is pure luck. Why? Because picking tennis matches is unbelievably unpredictable. Now, I did make some clutch picks. I'm not going to lie to you. And when I made this draw the qualifiers weren't placed yet so I was forced to pick qualifiers over players without knowing who the qualifier is which is a big disrespect to the player I apologize but qualifiers 
always come through. Of course, not all of them, but some qualifiers will make it through. After all, Raducanu won the US Open as a qualifier. So this was brutal, but it had to be done. So I picked Q to win against Irani, and I was right, Storm Hunter beat Irani. I also picked Q against Soribes Tormo, no disrespect, and Q ended up winning, which was a Lina Korneva player who could be potentially in the top 10 or the top five in the next few years. But let me show you some of my clunkers here. There was a lot of draw busters, so to speak. I picked Samsonova over Anisimova. I think Anisimova is an unbelievable player capable of being in the top 10 or the top five, but I didn't think she was ready after being out for so long to beat an unbelievable player like Samsonova, but she took Samsonova out and I had Samsonova going all the way to the fourth round. Also, I picked Alexandrova who has one of the best serves on tour and I did not think that Ziegemund who is an unbelievable doubles player who won the United Cup alongside Zverev I did not believe that she could take out Alexandrova but she did and look here I had Alexandrova going all the way to the fourth round so an unbelievably bad pick and a big time draw buster now how about this one right here I picked Vandersova over Q and I'll be honest with you even if I knew that Yastremska was going to play Vandersova I still would have picked Vandersova and I had her going in the fourth round another clunker an unbelievable draw buster i did a little bit better with the men i got a lot of them right i did get some wrong as well a bad call was picking uh, shapovalov to win the first round i do like shapovalov as a player but he's struggling with his confidence right now and i thought he was gonna beat a qualifier who ended up being mesnik but he did lose in straight sets in the first round now you guys notice how i spelled hurkats i really apologize to all my polish viewers but one of my great friends and one of the most unbelievable players that I've ever seen was this guy called Marek Kaczynski. And we practiced a lot back in the day when I lived in Germany. And if you ask me to spell his name, Kaczynski, he's got Z's, he's got C's, he's got Y's in it. I wouldn't be able to spell it if my life depended on it. But I am learning. I am going to spell Kurkacz correctly the next time I make a draw.